And now to the exciting part of uh, the awardees' presentation. I'm sure we're all here to know more about them. And our objective is that the awardees introduce themselves, tell you who they are and what their business is, so the others sitting in the audience uh, will know who to look out for at the end of the session. So the way this is going to happen is each awardee's name, as I call up, will be given five minutes, as you've been informed already, to uh, make your presentation. The, uh, the order is in alphabetical order, so um, it's just by name, not by country. Um, and for the rest of the audience, I mean, we'll see what amazing businesses uh, that constitute this year's group of awardees. Uh, they've been chosen by the respective chambers to represent their countries, and they exemplify high standards of entrepreneurship and leadership as many of uh, you in the room. All of their bios are in the journal, so we will not spend time in uh, repeating that information. So without further ado, let's start the list of the awardees, and the first awardee that I'm going to invite up on stage and before I do that, I've got a reminder just to let you know, and this is protocol, so in the interest of time, at the end of four minutes, to my right, is Laura, and she's going to show a sign of one minute, just to give you an indication, so that we give everyone equal opportunity. Uh, no offense, but we just want to do it right, and we want to make sure everyone gets a chance to speak. Uh, and that's a one minute so-called sign um, indication and f end of five minutes will be the next awardee who will be announced. So uh, now we can start the awardees list. The first is Shaheen Afishan from Summit International Pakistan. Shaheen, please. Hello everybody. My name is Shaheen Afshan, and my company name is Summit International. And uh, I'm in this business uh, from um, 10 years back, 2000, I, I started my business. And uh, my business is all about the army. This is a quite hard for me, you know, this is a main job. So uh, I started uh, this business when I was uh, uh, doing my MBA, and I just take a loan, and I I think um, three thousand dollar, and then my first consignment is five hundred pieces. And you now here I'm in front of all of you, and um, right now I am I have a hundred employees in my factory, and uh, sometimes it goes to two hundred. And I'm making bulletproof jacket, ammunition jacket, and uh, bags, and uh, different army accessories and hunting stuff as well. And uh, there is uh, you know. It is very hard for me to compete, uh, you know, the best quality because it's all related to army and combat clothing. And um, this is really a hard work because, uh, you know, this is the different field. I al always want to go in a different thing. I want, always want to do something different, something, uh, you know, hard. And uh, now I am making almost 75 different products for army combat clothing and something for hunting. And now I am in, coming in the you know bags, uh, backpack, and the different things. And it's all about me. So, thank you. Thank you, Shaheen. I see we have some more people joining us. So. Give them 10 seconds to settle in. Our next awardee is from Mongolia, all the way from Mongolia. And her name is Bolorama Betbeer. The company's name is Mongol Mimplex Concern. My name is Batpayar Polorma. I'm from Mongolia, and uh, I'm very pleased to uh, pleased to participate in this important, uh, very wonderful conference meeting. 
and uh, to have chance to meet uh, with the very leaders, uh, business women from all the world. Uh, I would like to talk about little about my company. Uh, the company is a very long story, 80, 80 years in the market, uh, established in uh, 1923. Uh, and uh, Mongolia, you know, the Mongolia went uh, into economic uh, recession, and the Mongolia Olympics company, uh, the first national pharmaceutical company, which has been uh, carrying the honorable and uh, responsible uh, liability to provide essential drug, drugs and uh, medical devices to hospital and health organization. In uh, about uh, nine, uh, uh, nine, uh, uh, 90 percent of our employees is women. And uh, after the private, uh, company was privatized in uh, 2006, and uh, after this uh, time, uh, with management team and uh, Myself, uh, we uh, created for special for our workers, so special for women, a special training program. They, we give a possibility to achieve potential and have a good uh, satisfaction of the, from the job of the people. Uh, as our company, after the privatization, we have been making the strategy to confirm the company activity with world standard and to strengthen to the company market status. The priority achievement of us to import good quality, effective uh, medicine products uh, by contract of over 60 top leading pharmaceutical companies and uh, to distribute its only uh, ground of uh, survey result and accordance of uh, relevant boards and auditing organization. You know, the, in Mongolia, not, not have enough good infrastructure. We usually uh, make distribution whole Mongolia uh, they, for very far distance. And uh, new management remains committed to lock tradition of reliability and responsibility and quality. And together with the modern management and marketing, uh, our company strives to retain the position of market leader in Mongolia. Yes, uh, I would like to talk about a small situation what like happened uh, some of uh, two years ago. Uh, you know, the Mongolians call such extremely better uh, suit. We have very extremely climate uh, cold winter and very short, hot summer. During this uh, two years ago, the extremely suit season, very cold season, uh, several cold winter after the dry summer that combined the mean food shortage for the livestock, the generation have depended on for several. And a third of Mongolian to 2.7 million people lead nomadic lives and depend entirely on livestock for living. And during this time, uh, our company staff people, we helped for Mongolian herder families and abandoned the way of life and moved to cities. Uh, it, during this time, we, uh, we helped for 320 uh, village uh, for people uh, during very extremely time, uh, supplied very quickly all drugs and uh, some medicine. And now, of course, um, uh, we, uh, business is business, but uh, needs some. Uh, we have a social responsibility, and uh, of course, uh, uh, s uh, some of uh, special pharmaceutical and a medical part uh, businesses compare with uh, little uh, difficulties and from not have enough support from the government. But uh, really, the women, uh, some uh, trying best make uh, and for make healthy our population and uh, supplying a good, effective and special uh, uh, some quality uh, products which we're using in all the world. And uh, of course, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for all organizer and sponsor of this uh, conference and uh, give for us a uh, chance to exchange uh, some information and uh, experience and uh, meet with very nice people. 
and thank you, and I wish you all success in the future. Thank you very much. And our next awardee is from Peru, Marina Bustamante. Good morning. My name is Marina Bustamante. Renzo Costa was founded in Lima in 1973. It is today one of the most successful and known business in the manufacturing, import, and distribution of leather goods. We have of top in the lines products, including clothing, apparel, desk accessories, and luggage. Our products are manufactured with the high standard of quality. We have been leaders in the business of 38 years. To this day, Renzo Costa has 32 stores located in principal commercial centers of Lima and in the most important cities of Peru. We are also present at the international airports of Peru and Chile. We have 500 employees. In 2007, Renzo Costa started an innovative employment program and incorporated work with disabilities. Today, almost 12% of the production here work it, are hearing impaired. They work gives the highest standard of professionalism and efficiency. As it is usually very hard for those working to find employment, they demonstrated very high levels of motivation and commitment and their quality of work is very good, very, very good. Currently, currently as the, the CEO of Renzo Costa, I am putting a strong emphasis on grow, growth and international outreach and I am driven by the power of dreams and hard work, a dynamic combination. For the past three years, I have been the president of the Corporate Social Responsibility uh, Commission of the Lima Chamber of Commerce. Thank you very much. I, my English is little, little, no good. So in, my, in my language, in my idioma, les diré que yo les traje un regalo. In my work, no hear, Giovanni, jóvenes, jungles, worker is very, very good. I have a gift for you. Thank you. Thank you, Marina. Moving along, our next awardee is from Spain, and that's Adriana Castamont. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. 
My name is Adriana Casademont. First of all, I would like to apologize for my poor English, too, <laughs> but I will try to do my best. I am really happy to be here and to have the opportunity to talk about my business th thanks to the IWIT organization. I am the president of Casa de Mont Company, where we elaborate processed meat products from pork, beef, chicken, on, and turkey. The final products that we sell are uh, ham, bacon, salami, uh, chorizo, serrano, halal products, etc. Excellent products. Um, at the more than 120 different products. Our business is to give to the meat height value, but to offer a healthy nutrition to everyone. We export 45% of our production to 75 countries around the world. So we have to adapt our products to each country consumer's needs and preferences. We are aware that food is a culture and we must be flexible and to adapt us to the markets we export. Every day we process it over 100 tons of meat in our four factories in Catalonia, northeast of Spain, with a $120 million annual turnover, turnover. We are a team of over 400 people um, we are the company, engine, force, and the main asset. 65% of our staff are women. We are the first Spanish company to implant equality protocol because I believe in plural, plural teams work and equality gender than, uh, that, ha, uh, that have the same rights, duties, and opportunities. Casa de Mont Company was founded, founded with the um, courage of the best entrepreneur, my father, more than 50 years ago. Unfortunately, he's not longer with us. I inherited the business, but the most valuable legacy I learned from him was his role model. So since then, I am trying hard to continue his work uh, the best I can. In my company, the pillars are four, quality, market, innovation, and the human team. Quality in the products and in the manufacturing process in order to target and to achieve the best company efficiency. Marketing, market accomplished by our customers and clients, for example, supermarkets, delicatessen, restaurants, food shops, etc., from all over the world. My dream is to have the opportunity to introduce my products in the USA market in a long or short time. I hope in a short time. <laughs> Innovation as developing new meat produ products and better packagings. Recently, we have patented a new and revolutionary quick sausage drying system unique in the world, and which it will be the new production model for the future. The human team uh, who are well trained and geared to strive uh, for perfection are the company Life Force. I firmly believe that motivated workers uh, allow the company to grow and develop it. I am convinced that business are the basis of the economy, and women have an important role in it. With our skills, strengths, and humanity, humanity values, we are creating a better world. Lastly, I would like to offer this I Week Hour to my father, my family, my, my husband, and my three children, and my company, Human Team, because without them, I wouldn't be here today. Thanks to all of you.
Thank you, Adriana. And our next awardee is also from Spain, Rosa Clara. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Rosa Clara. I have and company uh, the wedding dress and cocktail dress. I speak uh, little Italy, so uh, Damaris Mardi speak for me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good morning. Before I begin, let me thank Nancy Plugger, Adela Suirana, Ambassador Davis, all the organization and the sponsors for the award, and for inviting me to this conference and giving me the opportunity of, to meet you all. It is an honor. Explaining the Rosa Clara Group is quite easy. It's nothing more than the realization of a dream that was had 17 years ago that, so that all brides could find their ideal dress. As a new mother in 1994, I wonder how I could combine my two passions, family in the bridal industry, in which I had been working for many years, and it occurred to me that opening my own wedding dress in Barcelona would be a good option. Based on my experience, I knew that there was a growing niche market that demanded design wedding dresses, innovative models made with high-end fabrics that are very distinct from the classical polyester dresses that women would generally find. This new vision revolutioned the industry, and what started out as a small store with two salespeople and a dressmaker, quickly turned into a network of shops and franchises throughout Spain that was beginning to gain presence in Italy. Despite such early success, we soon realized that if we wanted to establish our company internationally and, it turn it, and turn it into one of the leaders of the industry, we would have to seek out new options that would help us add value to our product. That is how we made some decisions that would change the course of our company. First and most important, regarding the product. We designed a product that would use the best fabrics and fit in with the bridal fashion concepts. And we wanted to be able to create a custom dress for each person. The second decision was that we created secondary brands that would let us provide similar product at lower prices so that any ride could afford them. This is how two by Rosa Clara, Aire Barcelona, and Alma Novia came about. The third decision is that we sign exclusive contact with odd couture dressmakers such as Christian Lacroix, Karl Lagerfeld, Jesus Del Pozo to manufacture and distribute their collections worldwide. Using this strategy, we were able to raise awareness of our brand in international markets and position it at the highest level. The fourth decision is that we split production into two zones, Europe and Asia. Uh, the Rosa Clara articles and the designer's garments are made in Europe. We have hired Spanish workshops and manufactured the dresses we order from them, exclusively using the material that we send them from our headquarters, patterns, fabric, buttons, everything. In Asia, we produce secondary brands that we design ourselves in order to obtain an excellent quality price ratio that let us sell the dresses at a much more affordable price. Fourth decision is that we also split the distribution between Barcelona and New Jersey, managing logistics from Spain for the rest of Europe and some remote markets like Australia, for example, and from the United States for distribution throughout North and South America. The last decision, we boosted the image of the Rosa Clara brand. How? Through commitment to advertising. We decided to hire one of the best fashion photographers and created a new modern and groundbreaking image. And we purchased advertising Spain in bridal, social and fashion magazines. We also throw ourselves into communication. We have our own press department in charge of managing communication media and upholding constant contact with social reporters and journalists to keep them abreast of anything new in the company. We capture rights in the news that can advocate for the brand, and we organize our presence at the Barcelona Bridal Week, the best bridal, week, uh, bridal wear catwalk in Europe. In fact, for the last seven years, we have been the brand that opens the event. And finally, we boosted the brand's image by taking advantage of new tools that have been appearing, such as the internet, social networks like Facebook and Twitter. 
Fortunately, the strategy works, and today we can say that we have achieved our great ambition to be a company without borders and to be able to offer our products all over the world. At present, we continue working to explore our work everywhere in the world and have set a new goal for the company to provide a full service for brides and their companions. So apart from the six bridal collections we produce each year, we also have four collections of prom dresses, <coughs> accessories, lingerie footwear, and as a few months ago, a jewelry collection that we are really excited about. In closing, I would like to emphasize that although these words I'm reading today speak of success, in reality, our work has also entailed a lot of struggle and sacrifice. Luckily, I'm surrounded by a fantastic team of men and women who have made it very easy for me and with whom I hope to continue struggling, suffering, and especially remaining inspired for many years to come. I thank all of them, and I especially thank my family, without which I would not be here today. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, information on your company and your business. Susan, uh, sorry, the next uh, awardee is from South Africa, and that is Susan Huxter. Susan. Good morning. I'm delighted to be here and very humbled to be nominated along with all these wonderful women whom I'd like to congratulate. Thank you to the Cape Chamber of Commerce, Annie Boddington, who pushed me, IWAC, and all the sponsors for this award. An entrepreneur is defined in the Urban Dictionary, knows a little of something, but a lot of everything, loves starting things, then delegating them to others, hates bosses, rules, authority, and taxes, <laughs> sees the things on the way and not in the way, probably, probably doesn't re even really know how to spell entrepreneur. <laughs> My business is an interesting one that allows me to live a very different, exciting, challenging, stressful, but rewarding life. We work hours when others are at home. Our ovens only switch off for three hours a day. We are open 365 days a year, and we hardly ever say no. We have learned to be creative and innovative, to survive in a very competitive industry, which is influenced by a number of external factors that we have no control over, such as wars, exchange rates, a volatile currency, other destinations being the hot new in place to experience, and the list goes on. But we re-innovate ourselves continuously. We are a Relais and Chateau boutique hotel in a small village in the Cape Winelands at the tip of Africa. And yet we are discovered by people far and wide who come and enjoy our small piece of heaven. It never ceases to amaze me that we are filled with many different nationalities, ages, sizes, shapes. At any given time, you can hear five to six different languages being spoken and can meet a range of people who are celebrating honeymoons, golden wedding anniversaries, intrepid travelers and food lovers. This does, however, come with its own challenges, as each person has their own unique experience that they want to take away with them. Over the years, we have continuously featured on the Condé Nast Top Hotel List, Travel and Leisure's Readers Award, and Tatler's Magazine UK as the, best, the world's best small hotel in 2005. We offer, every individualized, we offer very individualized accommodation in a range of room types, and our offering is centered around food and extraordinary experiences. We have three restaurants, two on property, and one on our family vineyard, where we make the best charcuterie in South Africa. We love food. We also have an art gallery and promote South African contemporary art, and we have the only movie house in town. Our signature restaurant, The Tasting Room, under the magic creative eye of Marco Jansa, our executive chef, has been included in the world's 50 top list eight times and rated as the best restaurant in Africa and the Middle East six times. This is a culinary space that never stagnates and the pressure to wow with every bite is higher each time. Through her passion for South Africa, Marco delights and surprises guests from all over the world. We have 22 years of experience in the art of looking after people and creating memories that last a lifetime. We offer exceptional experiences, not just hotel rooms. We believe that ours is a unique South African experience at a world-class level 
that keeps on evolving and changing, although we are bricks and mortars. We know that we always have to keep ahead of the game and that good is never good enough. We're as good as our team. Our team, the top tier is all female, and we employ 124 staff, of which 80% are female and from our local community. In Africa, it is said that for every person in your employ, you feed 10 people. Giving back, we uh, believe food is our game, so we started Isabella, Sharing is Caring, which is a program that provides 45 uh, preschool children every Friday with um, meals, and next year we will be feeding 100 preschool kids every day of the week and 300,000 breakfasts throughout the year. Going forward, we are looking at, uh, at starting a consulting and management firm. We already have two properties, one in Chile and one in South Africa that we have started consulting for. And we are looking at opening a second brand, which we have uh, begun as well, called Delicious Hotels. And uh, it's aimed at the glam packing young traveler who are, would like to choose what they want, duvets fluffed up or strawberry daiquiris. We love the brand and we are looking to find partners to take this internationally. It is too delicious to say small. We, every day I have 100 ideas and drive my team mad with I had a great idea last night. But the day I stop writing ideas down on pieces of paper, I might just miss that, miss that great one new idea. So for now that piece of paper and pen will still be there. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. And our list of awardees continues. Our next awardee is uh, from India, Meera Kulkarni, and I understand she was not able to join us this morning. Okay, so we move on to uh, our first awardee from the United States, Peggy McHale and Sandy Webster. Good morning. I'm Sandy Webster. My business partner, Peggy, was not able to join us but she'll, you'll meet her tomorrow evening when she makes it to the dinner. So a little bit about my company. We provide marketing and analytic consultants to Fortune 500 companies and to mid-sized companies that earn about 50 million and above. We have very high-leveled, uh, seasoned, tenured consultants and they're provided on an interim basis or as a completely outsourced project to us. So the services we provide are mostly uh, new market assessments. If you're coming into the US and you'd like your business assessed on whether or not it's a viable proposition, we will do that for you. Uh, mostly to large corporations, as I said, we, if they have a new product launch within the US or outside, we provide consultants that are steeped in launching new products. We service the telecom industry, the financial services industry, as well as the insurance industries. Those are the three verticals that we have currently. Uh, my background as well as Peggy's, Peggy comes from the telecom. We both met in financial services. We started our company after we were both displaced right after 9-11, and we were both marketing in corporate America. And while we were there, we thought about why aren't there companies that provide really seasoned consultants who've left corporate America because they don't have flexibility, enough flexibility if they want to work you know, part-time or if they have children to take care of and you left at a VP level, there really was no place for that. So we started hiring our friends while we were in corporate who were in that position and yearned to have a company around that. So when we left, we said, well, why don't we form that company? And we did. So we launched in 2002, as I said, right after 9-11. Uh, our office right now is in an incubator in Newark, New Jersey, and an incubator environment allows us to keep our overhead very low. Uh, if you don't have, know about incubators, you should really check it out because it's fantastic for small business owners. We just opened up an office in Hollywood, Florida, and that is uh, 
taking care of the whole southeast of the US. It's also bringing us our international clients as well as Florida is a hub for a lot of international clients. This year, we were recognized on the list of uh, the Inc. 5000 fastest growing business in America uh, for um, 2011. Uh, we were ranked 1178, which is fantastic out of 5000. And we showed a 252% growth in revenues between 2007 and 2010. So we're only at 5 million, but we're growing rapidly. Uh, our consultants are mostly women, as I said before, women who have retired and they're very senior, they were senior executives. We are very passionate about women and that is why I really wanted to be a part of, of IWEC because I would love to uh, get to know all of you uh, on an international level. Our growth strategy uh, this year uh, changed a little rapidly because I'm not sure if you understand what's going on with small businesses in the US and the way consultants are being used and the, the restriction on the use of consultants, which impacts my business because I have 100% consulting base right now. Uh, the restriction is tightening up on the use of consultants and the regulation that the government is putting in place. So we've been forced this year to start uh, having employees, which is a huge cost to us. That is a game changer and the industry is changing rapidly for small business owners. So we're also very passionate about speaking to anyone who will listen about the impact that will have on small business owners. Uh, this year, we are going to uh, really start looking at mid-sized companies a little bit more as our growth strategies. And we're also expanding into the pharmaceutical industry as another vertical. And we're planning to expand internationally. So that's pretty much our uh, strategy for this year, our company's consultants to go. I'm Sandy Webster, and thank you. Thank you, Sandy. And our next awardee is again from South Africa, Valerie Menz. A very good morning to you all. Firstly, I'd like to express my gratitude uh, for the opportunity to be here. Um, I'm, a, I'm a country girl from a very small town in South Africa, and it's quite something to stand here today. Um, I want to express my gratitude to Annie Boddington, who has convinced me to, uh, or has nominated and convinced me through the Cape Chamber of Commerce to uh, send in my application. Um, I own a chain of pet boutiques in Cape Town, as well as a boutique uh, hotel on the beachfront of Cape Town overlooking the latest new uh, wonder of the world, Table Mountain. I have uh, just invested in a new venture as I'm an entrepreneur, and it, it fits so beautifully in with this event and with this opportunity to market because it is a global business, it is an international business, and there is major opportunity here. Um, <clears throat> um, as I'm a natural entrepreneur, I have just uh, invested in a very exciting business. There is a saying that goes, new broom sweep clean, and that saying is true to Squeepa. We manufacture a range of electromeric uh, elastomer cleaning products, which is brooms and brushes. We have just launched our new generation products in October and was incredibly well received in Sub-Saharan Africa and Britain. These revolutionary products will replace old traditional brooms and brushes in many different market sectors. Uh, uh, the company was founded in 1972 and my business partner, 
um, has invented the very first uh, rubber broom that uh, he sold of more than 1.3 billion uh, in internationally in the world. It's the first broom that the um, hairdressers used. Uh, since then, many beautiful products was uh, cr uh, invented and created, and we're just ready to launch completely globally with that. Um, we do manufacture under our own brand called Squeeper, but we also manufacture under other brands. Uh, we have just con been contracted uh, to manufacture for Addis, we, uh, for the Britain market, the African market, as well as for France. And very excited to meet you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, IWAC. I'm very pleased to be here. It's a huge honor to be in group of women who are so powerful. And I have to say, for all of you who don't speak English as your native language, I'm in awe that you're up here in front of everyone. <laughs> so um, I'm the founder and CEO of Deer Isle Group. We are a uh, broker dealer here in New York. So when people talk about regulation, we have lots of regulation um, imposed upon us by the uh, government. Um, but we are a financial advisory and capital raising firm we uh, specialize with a focus on emerging markets and alternative investments. And when we say um, alternative investments, what we mean is basically anything that's very complicated to understand, so I won't try to explain what we do in any more detail, but I'm happy to talk about it um, with you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we were founded in 2007, and since then I've raised about $5 billion of capital from um, U.S. institutional investors, and when I say institutional investors, what I mean are pension funds, endowments, large family offices, so people with lots of money. Um, we also are focused on social impact investing in the emerging markets. I'm currently on the investment committee of a social impact um, frontier markets fund. Frontier markets means emerging markets, not including Brazil, India, China. Um, and uh, we have a $87 million commitment from OPIC, which is an arm of the U.S. government, um, to invest in those markets in funds and firms that um, sort of focus on social impact. And really for us, there's a broad range of uh, definitions about what social impact is. But for us, it's um, small, medium-sized enterprises. Um, we don't have a specific definition because we are trying to generate market rate returns for these, these uh, institutional investors. Um, so if you want cap access to capital, I'm happy to talk to you about it and about the process, about how to um, raise capital in the U.S. Um, finally, I'm also co-chair of the Harvard Business School Club of New York Community Partners Group. And what that group is is we um, put together groups of HBS alums um, who do pro bono consulting for you, uh, New York City area nonprofits. Um, and last year we did about 35 projects, so we helped about 35 nonprofits with their strategic issues. And this year it looks like we'll do uh, about 40 projects. So, so we're quite happy with the impact that we're having from that perspective as well. Thank you. Our next presenter is Namita Rahman. Singh Rinari Tea Estate in India. Amita. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. When I got a note that I would have to speak uh, from the heart, I was actually very relieved. God knows what would have happened if I would have spoken my mind. <laughs> I grew up in the northeast of India, and I knew that uh, my father, who was not well and was suffering from neuro problems and depression, had an abundant sort of tea estate. And as destiny would have it, just after graduation, uh, one of the experts who had visited the garden, his car broke down just right in front of our house. And he came and I heard him telling my father that if you don't now seriously look into it, it's 700 acres of like wasteland lying and everybody's suffering and there's no development and you might have to bring it into sale or declare it sick or whatever. So somewhere I got very worried, very, very deep down I was very worried and I went up and I asked, 
can I look after this tea state? And he said, yes. He, he was very surprised. But, but he said, yes, why not? And everybody discouraged me because it was a politically sensitive area and you know, I was just a very young girl and just going alone with a consultant far off that area. But I was determined. As the saying goes that the distance is nothing, it's just the first step which counts. So we started going, visiting, and it was very hard for me to convince my father to give me money to buy saplings, small tea saplings, because we started to plant, say, 10 acres, 20 acres at a time. And slowly, uh, the tea started growing. And uh, first of all, we equalized the men and women wages. I found it very funny that the women were getting lesser wages than the men. So we equalized that. And we started working, sort of encouraging them, because they had lost all the zeal to work. And this is how it went on. But as the little bit of leaves started coming from the new plantations, we had more problems, because it was a 70-year-old factory. And you know, we had no power. It was run by some, uh, uh, some chains and all that, I don't know. And you know, we didn't have that kind of power to hold uh, the new coming leaves from the new plantations. And I heard that the electricity board, if you apply for 100 kVA electricity, it will take years to get sanctioned because you have to go out up the top 10 floors and convince people, and it's very difficult. So with tears in my eyes, I managed to get appointment with the chairman, and I went and I told him, this is what I hear about your organization. I don't have the time nor the money, and my leaves are rotting in the factory. So within half an hour, I had the sanction letter in my hand. And this is how it went on. And there is still a lot of struggle. There are a lot of climate concerns. The rains are becoming less and less, and uh, the way we are exploiting the earth, and uh, there are, you know, I want to have more solar energy equipments in the factory so that, you know, we have, we can go with the times and save as much energy as possible. I'm looking for vast rainwater harvesting systems, you know, so that, you know, we can protect that water, retain that water which, is over, which overflows during the rains and that can help us during the drought. And we want to live, improve the living conditions of our people, which sometimes are 500 during the peak season. And we are looking for new markets. And tea is a very healthy drink, as I said yesterday. It is anti-cancerous. It has antioxidants. I don't see too many people uh, drinking tea. But yes, there's a lot of iced tea and all around. And uh, we are also innovating in our research association. Tea tablets are coming up. Uh, instant tea is coming up. And as you know, green tea and all their green tea and black tea actually are equally healthy. But uh, there are many new uh, varieties which will come up so that people will drink uh, more and more tea. And this award I dedicate to my mother. I was very close to her. I lost her this year in June. And I would like to share a small poetry, which, is, which has always been my favorite. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep, and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. Thank you. Very deep down. Our next presenter is Manjula Reddy. She is with the Country Club India Limited from India. Manjula. This is the after effect of my 50th surprise birthday party, The Boys. <laughs> and uh, um, to me, entrepreneurship is like a painting. Entrepreneurs are like Picasso. Picasso uses simple things like a canvas and the colors to make this masterpiece cut make them, and we utilize the existing resources, manpower, and create the company. I always wanted to be in an industry which brings happiness to people's lives. Most of us here spend 30% of our existence sleeping, 30% working, maybe 5% traveling, 5% doing chores or other activities. We sometimes work on weekends, pull all night years to get a project done so that we can enjoy the remaining 20% of our life. I wanted to do something that would enhance the fun quotient in people's lives. My family and I come from an average hardworking middle class families, and I distinctly remember on one occasion of our recreation, we wanted to acquire a membership of a social club to avail the facility of the good swimming pool, tennis courts, and other activities for children, all under one roof. When we approached a local club for membership, we realized that the cost of the membership was prohibitively expensive. 
we were disappointed at first but soon realized that there are thousands of families like ours which wanted quality leisure services at affordable prices but there was no one catering to this segment it seemed as if a business opportunity was staring at us and considered opening our own club for middle and upper class families thus the first club private club was born we have about a quarter million members now we endeavor to provide our members opportunity to celebrate events and star studded concerts and community festivals at the club people would come meet at the club network sometimes even end up getting married some something similar to a virtual facebook but in this case a real facebook several careers were launched because of the platform of the country club provided one such example is our shooter gagan who had who had practiced in our uh, club premises and had won the gold medal for india the country club pageant also went up to miss country club miss india sorry miss country club went to miss india in addition to all this country club was an instrumental in launching many community building programs like rescuing women from human trafficking and teaching them the art of italian lace making so that they would earn a decent living our company continued to organize innovative programs thinking out of the box and organized events for the children the like the fairy tale night with disney characters to the to the juvenile jail children 6 years on we felt emboldened and we started our first hotel venture hotel amrita castle architecturally built to look like a castle and it hold today it is it holds the world record for the only castle constructed in the 20th century by 2005 we entered the golden era and completed 40 acquisition in 5 years apart from expanding into 40 cities and towns and apart from domestic expansion we also added international destinations like sri lanka and uae our further expansions is in qatar bahrain kenya south africa us and uk as a de risking strategy we make an effort to ensure that a single city doesn't contribute to more than 10% of our earnings and a single country doesn't contribute to more than 25% of our profits my company employs 1500 women of 10 nationalities as we expand we intend to employ more and more women from different countries both for our necessity and also to promote self reliance and financial independence among women on a personal note I would like to thank IWEC for this award and tell everyone in this room here I am humbled and greatly honored. One cannot appreciate the light if one has never seen darkness. Thank you. Small tea. Thank you Manjula. Our next presenter is Bonnie Shinetta from Sound Sense right here in Long Island in the US of A. Bonnie I do want to thank everyone that is involved in the process of me being here and I am honored to be in the presence of all of you. So in order for you to understand what my company is about, it's important to understand my journey. So I started out with a mother who came over in her teens from Czechoslovakia, barely spoke the language, was not allowed to go to college, so she was determined that every single one of her children were going to go to college that was not an option she was the original type a but she was housed as a house mother and my father was a brilliant mathematician and engineer and he taught me to love math and engineering and in his mind he was just a happy man and his goal was that every one of his children had to be happy so off i went to college and my father taught me to love math now when i got to college i had no idea that women were not supposed to be in math and engineering so as a math major i thought to myself what a great opportunity to meet men i'm the only woman <laughs> so i never took it as anything negative so by the time i graduated college i was a fast moving train i loved math 
applied math. I knew I wanted to go into engineering, and off I went. At that point, there was no stopping me. So I fell in love with what's called vibrations as a mechanical engineer, and I studied them. My original work was with GE, and I worked in engine rooms of tankers and container ships. And from there, it's a long story how I got my PhD in what's called signal processing, which is where you mathematically model signals and noise. And of course, along the way, I had two children. In 81, I was, at that point, I was doing classified work. Of course, that means I can't tell you what it was. But um, I had my first child. So, okay, that's it. I guess I can't do, go to these classified meetings anymore. So I started my own company. And at that point, I had fallen in love with acoustics. It was my passion. And my father and mother had both succeeded. My mother, yes. Not only did I have one degree, but I had many. And for my father, I was loved what I did. So I started out, and I was a great engineer, and I would solve noise problems. Someone would say, this machine's making too much noise, and I would take care of it. They would say, I have this media room, and I, I don't know why, but the sound doesn't sound right. So I would fix it, and then every once in a while, it didn't work, and I would go, well, that doesn't make any sense. I'm a great engineer, and of course, as a good type A woman, I was not going to be defeated. So I went out in the field, yes, the construction field with my boots covered with sheetrock dust. I was determined to figure out what was the problem. Well, it turned out a lot of times there were no products. Uh, a lot of times they were not installed properly. Or there were products, but they had been swapped for something that was cheaper. There had been no control. Or they were delivered and no one had checked to make sure and that certain it was the correct quality. So with that, I said to myself, well, I'm going to do something about this. I'm going to invent things to test the installation. I'm going to invent products. So it does the same thing only better, or maybe will cost less. So in 2000, I went from, remember in 81, I started a company, which I called South Fork Technological Consultants. And in 2000, I hit the reset button and I became SoundSense. And SoundSense is an acoustical engineering firm we are also have our own product line, and we have our installation crews. Now, what does that mean to you? Well, what it means is that in our product line, if, say, for example, I'm talking to everyone here, if you are involved with a lead building, one of the problems in the lead building is that there are terrible acoustics. So we've invented acoustic carpet underlayment, acoustic pillows architectural elements, because you need to have glass everywhere and you need to not cover the floor. We have products for classroom acoustics, because in classroom acoustics, if it is a low reverberation time, that means the child is going to have a higher attention span and will learn better. That also means in conference rooms, less people fall asleep. In uh, work, work study areas, there's actually a noted higher productivity and um, as well as in hospitals, a person will heal faster if it is the proper acoustics. So there are now ANSI standards out there to support this. And to conclude, to follow in my parents' passion, we give scholarships to young women, and I mentor them if they're in the field of science. And I want to thank you very much. Our next speaker is Dr. Maria Scoro Malateo from the standout group of companies from the Philippines. There she is. Thank you, Nancy. A blessed day to each and every one of us. It is really my honor to be here, to be one of the awardees. And for the recognition, thank you so much for the sponsors. Thank you so much for uh, the organizers. And um, I would say, when you talk from the heart, it's true, you also talk from the mind, because the mind and the heart always go together. 20 years ago, God has been so good to me that I was able to start up with a company that relates to my scholastic background and my experience. I work in McCann Erickson Advertising, and it's based in New York. And then afterwards, I said, I want to help people. I want to bring out the best in people when I was moved from creative department to HRD department. So I said, how can I help people? So I put up my own company, an HRD and advertising company, 
but I did not stop there. I said, I want to travel. I want to help people. But how could I help if I do not help? So I want to, to establish more. And then from then on, one of the things that I have done is not just into recruitment. It's not only into training. But some people advised me to go overseas. And it's very difficult. But it made me a very good start to travel the world. I didn't succeed much in overseas recruitment because I help people from the heart. I didn't take so much from, from, from them, but I do much in my local training and in my local recruitment. But you know, whatever you saw, you will reap. You know, afterwards, I have met people from overseas, and now from my uh, local recruitment company, I'm now into international trading. I'm now into distribution and warehousing. And then we are now into realty and development, into construction. And we're able to establish our offices in Malaysia, in Singapore, in Hong Kong, in Doha, Qatar, and also in Dubai. And now we are moving forward. We would like to establish soon our partners, in, of course, in the USA. And then we are now having contracts in some of the places like in South Africa. And then uh, we have also in Moscow, in Canada, for the international training. And that is international trading, and as well as into our warehousing and distribution center. What else? So because of this, I want to give back to people whatever they have given me. And uh, I believe that charity begins at home. And in our office, the standout group of companies that started as a consulting company, we have so much of our corporate social responsibility. We have this women helping women. And we believe that we don't only give fish, we teach them to fish. And not only that, for, for, for the children, we, we want children to, to have a good life. In the Philippines, you know, how, how can you alleviate poverty? I believe through education, through training, through employment, and through entrepreneurship. That's what we are doing, because what we, ha what we are now, it's because of the people behind us. And uh, my husband is here, he's very supportive. I have a very good family. My children are all doing church work. And so part of the things that we do, we help in the church too. You know, last year, I was so blessed to be part of the Hege Institute. We were trained to advance evangelism. And that's what we are doing right now. We are helping the church. It's not only money that matters most. It's the moral values of people. So. We would like to add value, add value to, to life in terms of education, in terms of giving value to them, gi giving so much importance to people. And I thank so much for the affirmation that Nancy gave last night, the relationship. You know, the most expensive investment I have done in my life is relationship. Now what I am is through people through people that have helped me where I am now. And so I give glory to God for all these things, and I want to congratulate each one of us for the success of this event. To God be the glory. And everybody. Next up is Diane Thompson, representing the Powercom Group from Australia. Diane? Thank you very much, Nancy. And I should, right up front, thank Shipra very much for uh, persuading me to, um, to, to, to uh, be part of this uh, wonderful um, event. Um, I began my career um, as a musician and a music teacher, which I continued for 25 years. But uh, uh, seven years of those 25 years, I was also helping to, um, to, to, to establish our company, the, uh, or our four companies, the Powercom Group. I also had to bring up three children during that time, so I know, know all about time management. Um, my husband, Philip, and I started our business in 1991, so this year is 20 years, and it feels honestly like it's only one. Um, it's been so much fun. I believe that you have to follow your passion and, and what you believe in. And if you do that every day of your life, as we have done for the last 20 years, you can only have fun. 
And I think that's what that's the difference of, of an entrepreneur and someone that has to work uh, for maybe corporates. If you're not doing what you love, you can't achieve great things. Since, since that time, we've been tailor-making electronic um, equipment and building communication systems for government, government and industry in Australia and overseas. The group comprises of four companies, Navaris, which is spelled N-O-V-A-R-S, I noticed that that's incorrect in, in the, um, the brochure, um, means to innovate in Latin. We ran out of, uh, of names in English, so we got out the book, um, Philip's old Latin book and looked it up. So Navaris means to innovate. The Powercom group, uh, the Powercom company, Powercom Systems and Data Call Telemetry. Our business has developed with a focus not only on designing and manufacturing high quality products, but also on building the capability to deliver complete solutions to whatever problem for, or challenge our clients might have. We've learned that in a highly complex industry, every job is different and there is often more than one way to solve a problem. We can evaluate the situation, design a solution, manufacture the equipment, install it, maintain it and train your people how to work it. So it's a complete package. The Powercom Group, as I already mentioned, comprises four high-tech business units. Powercom Consultants is a nerve centre of the operation and here we evaluate our clients' needs, design the equipment that, that help the entire project um, become successful from start to finish. Our manufacturing division, Navaris, builds the required electronic equipment to exacting world standards. We also hope to take Navaris to Europe for the first time next year to the Hanover Fair. We um, we, we have built our brand recognition throughout Southeast Asia and Africa. We would, we're really trying to um, broaden that aspect now and take it through to Europe. So wish us luck. The four units work together as an impressive team, each supporting the other. We manage projects in some of the most difficult environments on earth and our clients get exactly what they want. We're very proud of the way our dedicated engineers and staff uh, work together. The right people create a unique business. I'd like to tell you a little bit about Navaris because that, that we call it our engine room. Um, each year, millions of dollars of, dam of damaged equipment and lost time can be directly attributed to lightning strikes and other electrical disturbances. Around the Earth, lightning strikes 100 times per second, or 8,640,000 times a day, on average. Navaris has designed and manufactured lightning and electrical disturbance protection systems since 1993. We specialise in the protection of power and data signalling and oil and gas products. They're used locally, nationally and internationally and we now are world leaders in lightning and surge protection. Not to be confused with lighting. I've had people come up and say, so you produce lighting? No lightning protection. Um, we design, supply and provide advice on structural lightning protection and earthing systems for all stru structures in accordance with recognised world standards. Our products range from main switchboard and distribution. Working. Okay, our next presenter is Elizabeth Trallero from Congos Plastic from España. I'm delighted to be here today and thank you for this iWeek Award. Special thanks for Adela Subirana, whom we met so many years ago, and she has always been very pushing on that. My name is Elizabeth Trallero. I'm half Scottish and half Spanish, and I live in Barcelona, Spain, married with three sons. My main business, which is part of a family-owned group of companies, is Congos Plastic, a Spanish leading company with more than 50 years experience in manufacturing and distributing industrial plastic products for maintenance, stocking, and warehousing. Our revenue is approximately 12 million euros, and we have around 45 employees. Total group, more than 30 million euros and more than 100. And I said more because I don't know exactly 
you know, the temporary workings that depends on the orders. Congo exports more than 20% abroad, hopefully, because you know Spain is in a very delicate situation. Have subsidiaries in France, Italy, Portugal, and distributors in most European countries, as well as customers in Ghana, Israel, Morocco, Norway, Seychelles Islands, Dominic Dominican Republic, Singapore, Turkey, and of course the US. Congo has more than 40,000 customers that mainly purchase pallets, dollies, stackable and nestable crates, containers, plastic barriers, uh, waste containers, floor slats, and some other products. Our most well-known international customers are also are, uh, GlaxoSmithKline, Geox, Henkel, Sara Lee, Metro, PepsiCo, Nestle, Coca-Cola, Carrefour, Bayesdorf, Rekit Benkiser, and of course many Spanish companies, El Pozo, Pan Rico, Campo Frio, Almirai, Grifols, Yadro, and the Barca soccer team that most of you should know. Quality is so 9001 2008 by Yoids at the at European level. Technology are one of our key aspects of success, as well as service. Our experience are main skills to cover any logistic and storage requirement, present and in different industrial sectors. And also, our management team of six excellent professionals, well-balanced three men and three women, something which is quite difficult in the Spanish environment due to our culture, the Spanish macho country, mainly in the industrial sector. Uh, and this is the logical part of the explanation. And now let me explain you the hard part. The hard part is that this is a company that was created by my father 50 years ago. She died, unfortunately, 29 years ago. And at that time, it was very difficult. I was too young. So what I did was selling the company to my boyfriend, my best friend, my husband, and his family. Of course, I married him. And uh, <laughs> 16 years ago, uh, I was asked by him to take the lead of the company. So I didn't say I married, but I had the sons. And I didn't say, and finally, one day he said, would you like to? Of course, I love to do that, because I was trained by my father. And, uh, and that's what I wanted to do. So I'm very delighted to be here, Benny Arnold. Thanks for, being, for uh, giving me this award. Thank you. Our manager. All right, our next presenter is Barbara Vandenbosch from the Vintage Group in South Africa. Barbara. Good morning, everyone. I'm Barbara Vandenbosch from South Africa, and I'm a fruit farmer in South Africa. As I work in the men's world, it's really something new for me to stand here in a room full of women. I find it amazing, and thank you for that. It's a nice change. I'm an apple and pear farmer in the Elgin Grabau region, which is about 70 kilometers from Cape Town. And um, originally, I came from Belgium. I came to South Africa in 1995, and I started farming on a very small farm of about 60 hectares. I think you have to do it times 2.5 to get acres. And 16 years later, we have 580 hectares under production uh, on four farms in the region. I will always speak in the we form because farming is a team effort. It's not a solo project. Once the markets opened in 1997, we started exporting all over the world, or at least where we were allowed to export. So not only for farming, we also pack our own fruit, we cool it, we put it in the containers, we send them off to the harbor, and we export them ourselves to all the importers, wherever they might be. Now that's my business part, but for now, the pa my passion in life, I would start off with a saying from the Archbishop Erismund Desmond Tutu, when asked how one should live a meaningful life. He used the example of the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea receives wonderful fresh water, but because it never shares that water, the water becomes bad. Not just, so just not receive in life, but rather give, and you will have a meaningful life. 
I believe that giving back to those around me is perhaps a good way to describe my philosophy in life. And I thank the Arch for this wonderful description. That was one of the main reasons that we agribee eat one of our farms in 2008. We empowered 197 of our own workers. To explain a little bit what agribee is, it's an initiative from the government where they help us to have the people that previously were disadvantaged to have them have shares in the farming business or in any business. So we gave them 52% of one of the farms and for, what are we now? for four years we have been very successful and it's going very positively. As the CEO of the Vintage Group, I have been part of an exciting partnership, not only in fruit farming and marketing, but also in creating new opportunities for the people in our region. We have 250 permanent employees and their families living on our farms. During the season time, this number increases to about 2,000 workers who also stay and live on the farm. Since we all share the land and its spoils, it's very important that everyone benefits from it. So I've been closely involved with a highly successful HIV AIDS program in cooperation with the University of Stellenbosch. And through skills program, education, mentorship, I have been able to help and change lives in our community in a positive way. It is a very slow process. But with more support, we can reach and teach so many more. As we live on a farm, it's a very close family because we are involved with one another's lives on a personal level, on a business level. So in the process, I have met many amazing and wonderful people. Parents, children, farm workers, their families, business people across the world. For all this and the gift of my three lovely children, Yella, Max and Ella, I'm eternally grateful. Thank you so much for this honor of being here today. So please, eat an apple a day. As you know, it keeps the doctor away. <laughs> if you want any more information about my business and my passions, I've got some brochures with information that you can get from me afterwards. Thank you so much. Which is about... All right, our next presenter is Ye Wande. Zaki, U.S. Did I say that right? No. <laughs> Sorry, Yvonne. She is with Eventful Limited from Nigeria. Help me again. Zakios. Ye Yewande Zakios. Zakios. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much, uh, IWEC. I am so excited and delighted to be here. Um, as I said yesterday, I am actually a lawyer, and I was a banker in my former life. But uh, what is interesting is I remember... I think sometime earlier this year, I met one of my colleagues at law school, who's now a senior advocate of Nigeria, and he was with his wife, and said to her, oh, she was such a brilliant lawyer, I don't know how she could have gotten into this business. And I said to him, you know what, if I was still a lawyer, I'd be lost with the millions of lawyers in Nigeria, but here I am, an event planner, and I'm being recognized internationally for it. I'm really, really excited. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> my name is Yewande Zakias, I'm from Lagos, Nigeria. Um, while I was, in the, I was in the corporate world for 18 years, when I now realized I was actually getting very bored and I wasn't interested in what I was doing. And when I asked all my friends who were in business, I asked them, how did you get into your businesses? Everybody was doing what they loved. And I said, what do I love? What do I know how to do? And that essentially was organizing people and events. And then 2002, I wondered, would that be a, a viable business? But um, doing some research, going on the internet, I found that this was a business that was very you know, successful abroad, but was totally unheard of in Nigeria. So I I took the risk and I, you know, threw away the golden handcuffs that tied me to my corporate job and decided to go into entrepreneurship. 
At the time I did this, everybody thought I was crazy because it wasn't what you do. And um, event planning, at least in my country, there were no entry bar barriers. Anybody could say they were an event planner. So people thought I was sort of taking a step down in life. But I was determined that I was going to apply all the professionalism and the wisdom and the experience I'd had from my corporate and legal background to this business. And uh, I believe that I have been able to do that successfully over the past nine years. But it didn't come without its challenges. Essentially, it was quite difficult to um, you know, tell the corporates that, you know, hand your events over to me, or even more difficult, very culturally unacceptable for us as Africans to ask people to hand over personal events like weddings and funerals for total strangers to handle. But um, as the reputation grew, as we did more of the businesses, you know, people found that this was actually much better for them. It enabled the corporates to focus on their core businesses and allowed us to take away all the stress that was related to their events. As I speak now, we're handling a World Bank seminar in Lagos. One of the, um, they, they've all come from abroad to ha have this seminar at one of the hotels in Lagos, and my company is handling that totally for them. So what happened with this, of course, is that more people started coming to this area. It was a totally new area, and it happened also that it was mostly women that would come because because as you know, women are natural multitaskers. And um, the business grew, and in the last 10 years, now in, in Nigeria, it's actually unheard of to have any event and you don't have an event planner. So that's actually something very good. We've actually been able to bring a lot of people into the business. We've raised the profile of the business and a lot of new startups have started. From events management, we now went into venue management, because one thing I found very quickly on was that there weren't many venues where people could have events. We had a few hotels, but not very many. And um, I started by, I got the uh, mandate to run the banquet hall of the Lagos State Government. This was because I'd been chasing after the governor looking for land so I could build my own hall. This, of course, was extremely expensive, and it was just a very, very difficult thing to do. Then an opportunity came for me. Somebody had a huge piece of land in Victoria Island, which is the most high-profile area in Lagos, and they weren't ready to develop it and asked me to to come and put up a tent because we actually have a lot of tent events in Nigeria. Now what I now decided was that what I really wanted was a real building but even though I couldn't afford it, I started talking to some people and came across what was called container architecture. Absolutely interesting. We have built a hall using containers only. And if you come inside the hall, it looks exactly like this, but on the outside it's containers. And this is something that Eventful has been a pioneer in as well. Um, that for me is one of the most important things that we've actually been able to do because it now means that we're able to replicate that across Nigeria and an opportunity has come uh, in Abuja now for us to do it. What I really want to do, what I'm hoping to um, get from this conference is hope hopefully to meet international businessmen and women who uh, you know, Africa is now an emerging nation. A lot of people are coming into Nigeria. People who know that maybe businesses are coming into Africa. I'd like to be the first point of call for anybody who wants to um, events planning services. And also, I'd really like to take the events business into the English-speaking West African countries. That is what I'm hoping I'll be able to do. And I'm hoping I'll be able, while I network, I'll be able to meet people who have interest in these areas and we can develop some alliances. Right now, the group does event planning, event consulting. We've got venue management. We do event, event uh, uh, management training for those who are interested. We do equipment rentals and uh, also event publications. Uh, I really want to thank uh, IWEC for this award. And most of all, I want to dedicate it to my children, who when I was leaving the corporate world, I told them that I was going to have more time for them. But that wasn't the case. Thank you very much. And uh, last but certainly not least this morning, our, our last awardee to present will be uh, Saida Zainat Ara Nippon uh, from NDE Fashion. Bangladesh. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, firstly, I'm extremely sorry that um, I am not expert in English, but I am trying to speak. Uh, I am Saida Jinadara Nippon, Director of Chidong Women Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Bangladesh. Uh, I have a um, uh, four item business, uh, anti fashion and garments. Um, ND catering uh, and ND beauty parlor. I am exporting sweater to USA to many um, many importer with my husband and not only USA, Canada, London, and etc. Others country. I have um, 3,000 worker workers in my sweater factory. 80 percent workers in ladies. Uh, I'm. Um, I, um, I am supplying raw item, uh, my um, and the uh, catering right every mall in Chidong, only in Chidong. Um, I find myself extremely honored to receiving such as 
important award of the International Women Entrepreneurs Challenge Award 2011, though I almost also must admit that some of our deep insight, I saw it coming one day. I am earnestly grateful for the recognition I have received for my work because I am very sure that every other nominee for this award was uh, capable of winning this award. I have faced several challenges on my way here, but it has only strengthened me to make me the person I am today. I am the, the professional who knows exactly what she wants, someone who has set her eyes on a goal and does not take them off it unless it is achieved. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know that the Muslim families of Bangladesh are conservative. I am also from the same environment, but I took this challenge with my strong determination and willpower Finally, I came out from these bindings, set up my business and works, trained my worker, and at the end, success have been materialized. Now, the women work under me has successfully established themselves in the same locality in their respective fields. I feel proud that I acted as their source of encouragement. It was not that much easy but I have made it a success. This award could not have been achieved with, uh, without the inspiration I have received from my senior, my colleague, from whom I have deep respect and from whom I have derived the strength to challenge myself and perform better to each stage. Let me tell you that it is not just my sole effort that has brought me here. I'd like to make special mention of Mrs. Monowara Hakimali, President, Chitong Women Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and Mr. Abdul Mandarana, my husband, is my friend here. My husband, a popular singer, uh, <laughs> popular and uh, famous singer and industri industrialist of Bangladesh, who has been my mentor throughout my stay here. It is only this uh, who saw the passion in me when I couldn't see it myself. They saw my talent and owned it to a point where I am now standing here and talking to all of you about it. Everyone needs such a mentor in life, and I am lucky to have found mine. Thanks to both of you for making me who am I today. I sincerely thanks every one of you, particularly Mrs. Nancy Polazer, okay, right? <laughs> Polazer, President, uh, International and Manhattan Chamber of Commerce, New York ESA, for helping me reach a stage where I can proudly ho hold up this award as a mark of my achievement. I also promise to only get better at my work so that you can see me here, hopefully for a different award next time. On a closing note, all I want to tell every one of you present here today is that you should never, never, never give up me, give up even if you think you are convinced that it's over. It's not over unless you want it to be. And a true example of this is standing right here in front of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Saida. Ladies and gentlemen, I think you can see why these wonderful women were chosen to represent their chambers, their cities, and their countries. Let's give them all a wonderful, warm welcome. Um, before we break, I just also wanted to acknowledge all of our New York City IWEC committee members, and I ask all of you to stand and be recognized. Can we get my committee members to stand? And please thank them all uh, for helping us put this conference together.
we have a tradition with our IWEC committee that all the awardees now must join the committee and help us move it forward for the next year. And I must say that our past awardees have really risen to the occasion and supported us to a degree that I would not have uh, imagined. So we thank all of you for supporting us and continuing your involvement and engagement in IWEC. www.manhattancctv